Peace and love. Blessed love. Greetings. Love and light. Ashe. You know, all those positive greetings that we give to one another. This is Real Radio Talk with my guest here. And this morning, 9-11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I have some things that I would like to discuss because um, I see a lot of things are shifting in this world and some of this shift really doesn't have anything to do with us personally because it's coming from higher governmental powers. But some of the things do come from us. And a lot of things has been happening within the conscious community, the unconscious community, the spiritual world. You know, a lot of people are coming to a certain awakening and they, you know, expanding their consciousness and they don't want to be stuck in certain religions anymore and not seeing any growth or they're seeing a lot of control and narcissist behavior, you know. So we're into like a times when a lot of these things is happening, you know, on both sides of the scales, negative and positive, it's balancing itself out every day in the school system, in the courthouse, in the police departments, you know, anywhere in the world, you name it, it's, there's something going on and these big changes that keep coming on planet Earth these past couple of years that we've been experiencing is really proving that the shift that we're coming into is actually shifting, you know? So these things that we see happening is because of the shift. That's all a part of what the shift does, you know? It shifts things around. So, you know, we see a lot of things shifting around on this planet, a lot of behaviors, a lot of mentalities, a lot of people's places and things is, you know, it's a lot of exposure happening. I'm seeing it more on an exposure level Things that we thought was yes is actually no. What we thought was no is yes. You know, a lot of things that was hidden and so-called secret or couldn't be found or was lost, they're being found now. They're no more secret now. And I want to touch a few topics, but the first topic that I want to touch on is spirituality versus religion. First, I'm going to talk about religion. And I'm not going to stay long on it. I'm just going to give outlines and I'm going to move on. I'm not going to dwell on it too much. The outlines that I give, you can go reference yourself. You can go research further if you want yourself. I'm just going to give some outlines. All right. So my first outline is this. You have spirituality versus religion. All right. You have some people that was in the religion world. They either come from Baptist, Pentecostal, Methodist, um, Catholic. What's the other one? Lutheran. Presbyterian, you know, all those European man-made religions. A lot of us come from that background. And a lot of us have shifted over to of a more cultural tradition and a more roots and culture mindset where I don't want to follow like a religion with all of these set of rules. And if I don't do it, I'm going to hell. I want to find out who I am and where I come from and find out about my ancestors and how they practice and worship God, or how they gave reverence, honor, or divination to God. You understand? So when, you, when you're in a spiritual mindset, you start thinking about, yeah, um, who were my ancestors? What were their, religi their religious practices? What did they do during holiday times that we do in holiday times? over here in the West. What were their holidays and their festivals, their ceremonies and celebration? Being of an African descent, and when I say African descent, I'm just using that word broadly because a lot of people identify with the word African American, African descent. Who haven't had ancestors from the continent of Africa, either they were here already before the slave trade, before so-called Columbus, or they were brought here during the transatlantic slave trade. Some of us have ancestors from both sides. Some of us have ancestors from one or the other. I, in particular, have ancestors from both sides. I have ancestors that were already here, pre-slavery, pre-Columbus. And then I also have ancestors that came here through the transatlantic slave trade. All right? So from that point of view, you know, it's, 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 I, I think I have an open opportunity to say and have a right to say from an African in America 
point of view, I can honestly say there is a big difference between religion and spirituality because my ancestors were forced to practice a religion when they were brought here and turned into slaves on the bottom of the slave ships. All right, they, that this religion was forced on them and they were shown certain parts of the Bible to make them think that they didn't matter and they were inferior and that God would punish them if they obeyed their masters. You know, God would do horrible and terrible things to them if they did not obey their masters. All right, in the Bible, yes, that is. So when you put that into a slave mind for 100 years, then 200 years, then 300 years, we got three generations right there already gone, already gone. Then 400, 500, 600, 700, and we're still counting, by the way. We're still counting, okay? We're still counting. So our ancestors who were brought here and made slaves from Africa, brought to the Caribbean as well, brought to Central Mexico and South America, Cuba, all the Caribbean islands in the Western Hemisphere, all the continents in the Western Hemisphere. Some indigenous people were already on these islands and living in these continents. There's no doubt about that. Both things happened. There were people already here in the Americas and the Caribbean, and there were people who were brought from Africa during a prisoner of war slave trade movement to the Americas. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking it slow and I'm breaking it down slow so you can follow where I'm, where I'm going with this. I don't want to lose people because sometimes people automatically get touchy when you start talking about recognizing your African roots and culture. Everybody wants to be American, 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 but I'm breaking down as an African born in America, what is an American? What is an African? What is an American to me is to follow those religions that was forced on my ancestors that were brought here during the transatlantic slave trade to follow. They were forced to follow those religions. The Holy Bible, King James Version. They even trained a lot of the slave couples, elder couples, to run Sunday school and teach a sermon. That's how Nat Turner was able to wake up and use their own Bible against them. All right? That's why Nat Turner is always respected, honored, and revered in my heart. I don't know about you, and if you never heard about him, you can research Nat Turner and his uh, slave revolt, and you'll understand how much he was a Bible person, but he used the Bible and flipped it back on the white man. All right? So I don't want to say too much, because that would be a research you can always go back and feed yourself with. However, not all slaves was like Nat Turner. And we got people like Nat Turner today in 2022, and we also have people that re remained under the slave syndrome, the transatlantic traumatic slave syndrome, with the Bible, took the Bible, believed that whatever in that Bible said was the word of God. And we got a large amount of Africans in America and in the Caribbean, Central America, South America, that's Christianized. And they don't want nothing to do with their own traditions, their own roots and culture. They don't want to care. They don't care who they are and where they come from. It's just this American or I'm a Caribbean person or a South American, wherever country you're from in the Caribbean or South America. I'm just that. You're just stuck on nationality. And a lot of times being stuck on nationality makes you forget what your bloodline is and who you are, where you really come from. That's why people go and get a D, um a DNA test because they want to know exactly what country on that continent of Africa or a continent anywhere in the world is my bloodline from. Where can I trace my DNA back to? When I did mines, it came back 77% African. The other percentage broke down to the Andean South America, 
and some Middle Eastern European countries, not really Middle Eastern, but countries in the Eastern part of Europe, so to speak. Like uh, Austria, stuff like that. Yeah, can't even really remember that, but yeah, the biggest percentage of my DNA is off the continent of Africa. It's 17% Kenya, 28% Nigeria, 25%, Sierra Leone, 5%, you know, that Ghana region coming all down to the Congo, you know, so it, it just gave you a geographic percentage on every country on the continent of Africa where your DNA matches, you know, and that was just on myheritage.com. If you don't have a whole lot of money to spend and you got like $50, $60 to spare, they always have a special, you can get that one. Then later on down the line, I will upgrade to the more expensive one where it actually brings you straight to the tribe. You know what I'm saying? Straight to where you can go right now and say, hey, you know, I found my relatives because of this. This DNA test brought me straight to the village, brought me straight to the city, to the state, to the town, wherever, you know, those relatives are. And that's a blessing to know that. So now you're not just an African in America, you know what I'm saying? You're also an African, you know? You're not just an American, American anymore. You're also your roots. And people keep forgetting that there were Africans here before Christopher Columbus and before the slave trade. There were Africans already here from the continent, from the motherland, from places like Mali and Benin and Ghana and Sierra Leone and Senegal. And even down and over into Ethiopia, down to the Cape of South Africa, there were black people coming from that continent to America. Yes. Yeah, so we we always been here. We own both, we have the best of both continents, both worlds. We could be here and be indigenous, or we could be there and be indigenous. Even if our ancestors did come here as slaves. We still have a right to this country because those same ancestors, those same six and seven great grandmothers and grandfathers and uncles and aunts built this country. You know what I mean? And you are a remark from them. You're a result of what they accomplished, whether it was paid or not, they still accomplished something. No, they didn't get paid, but they, if it wasn't for them, there wouldn't be help. There wouldn't be a White House. There wouldn't be a lot of houses, all right, here across America if it wasn't for our ancestors who were kidnapped and turned into slaves and stolen from Africa and brought to the Americas and the Caribbean. Then you got those ones that come from that lineage and they got conditioned because the slave master conditioned it into their brain so much that it became a part of their DNA, it became a part of their genetics. So when they had children, their children was born to be conditioned because you also made sure you conditioned your child, especially if you are conditioned. We all have a certain conditioning. And it just depends on what level that conditioning take you. And unfortunately, the religion has not helped a lot of black people per se, white people, or any nation. Because it's all about dividing and conquering and who's better and who's praising God more. It's, it's not really wholesome. It's not harmonic anymore. It's not good. It's not good anymore. You have a lot of these religious people that's stepping out into the stepping out of the religion world. I mean, the, yes, the religion world, and they want to move over to the spirituality world. They're bringing their religious mindset and their religious thoughts and their religious criticism and judgment and Bible way of thinking and talking, yet you call yourself a spiritualist or yet you call yourself a tarot, a tarot reader. There's so many tarot readers on YouTube. That's coming out nowadays with all these beautiful names, all these beautiful setups. And if you sort them out, because it's always good to sort them out, especially if you're trying to go get a tarot reading on YouTube and you watch a person channel a couple of times, you start resonating with them. You start, you know, understanding their flow of how they read. You understand how they connect. 
you're actually visualizing with your own two eyes at this at that time watching them do a reading and you see like yeah they're very connected they're channeling in really good and looks like their spirit guides are there around them making sure that they are protected making sure that they're getting the messages to you right all right so a lot of a lot of energy a lot of love and light has to be created to get a real bona fide reading to get the truth that, that's really coming from that omnigalactic source you understand what i'm saying when your spirit guides and the person who's giving you a reading spirit guides are there with you your reader is going to give you a good reading and you're going to walk away knowing that it wasn't a fraud that it was all real that she, you know he or she really opened up your mind and answered questions new things you didn't know Come on, you will know. You will know. And I'm saying all of that to say because there's religious, there's a lot of religious people I notice that always say they're spiritual. But when I have a, conversations with them or if I see how they operate, I see how they move, they're not really spiritual. They're very religious, especially when they say that they're covered in the blood of Jesus and they're acting wicked. I have to wonder, is that really the blood? Is that what the blood of Jesus does? Then I don't want to be covered in that. Because you can't tell me that you're covered in the blood of Jesus, yet you're doing mischief to people. You can't tell me that. And, you know, I don't need to go no further or no deeper into that to make a big fuss. But I'm going to just leave that where that is, right there. You can't tell me that you're covered in the blood of Jesus and you're saved and you're sanctified and filled with the Holy Spirit or filled with the Holy Ghost. And you behave in wicked. And then you call yourself spiritual when you get around other spiritual people, like real spiritual people who are really spiritual. You just want to be a part of what they are because you see in them what you want to see in yourself. But you've been so conditioned with religion that it's hard for you to snap out of that because now this is now a, a DNA issue now. This is now a genetics. This shit is embedded into your genes, okay? It's embedded into your DNA. So you have to do a lot of work to clean up your DNA and to get that trans Atlantic slave trade traumatic slave syndrome out of your essence, out of your aura, out of your energy field. You have to get it out. If you don't get it out, you will always be a hypocrite. You will always do wicked and say wicked and move wicked. You won't really show yourself approved as a true Christian, you know, what Christian is supposed to be, what the Bible say and how the Bible speaks about Christ and being Christ-like, you know, and how Jesus was expressing his Christ attributes by helping people and showing love and he was a healer, walking around healing people, you know, if we're not opening up our healing powers, opening up, and that can be through massage therapy, that could be through Reiki, that could be through teaching yoga, teaching an exercise class or some kind of mental health sessions, meditation, breathing. So if you're not doing something that's a part of a healing modality, then you, you know, you, you got to find something else that Christ did to be Christ-like, to show that you approve, to show that you're Christ-like. If that's not your field of work, then find something else that makes you be Christ-like. Because a lot of you don't have nothing to, you don't, it's like you don't have nothing to do but to be wicked and evil. They call out Christian and Jesus and saved and covered in some blood. You understand me? You're covered in some blood that I really have to question. Because this blood seems dangerous. Seems like it converts you into a different entity. A lot of those tower readers that y'all see on YouTube, they're only on YouTube because they see other people as really, you know, gifted and was actually blessed and come from a lineage of light workers, shamans, healers, you know, things like that, right? Now they want to be like that. Take a little small class to maybe learn about the cards and what they need. And then they start watching other people's channels, biting off of them, then applying it to their channel and saying it as if they created it and said it, but they really didn't. 
It's just sickening. And I see this all the time. My daughter is a tarot reader. And her channel is Star Seed Tarot 444. Star Seeds Tarot 444. Seeds with an S at the end. And she see, she go through a lot of hating with other readers from the whole YouTube world. And I explain to her all the time, those people, most of them come from the church and they were very highly religious. Something happened, something disappointed them, or they found out that the church is not all what it's, it seems. They're not living like what the Bible says to do. And then they see some, they go to a psychic and then they say, oh, I can do that. They start realizing they have that natural gift because we all do. We all do have that natural gift if we exercise and tap into it the right way. Not tapping into it with a pack of witches because you're trying to kill or hurt somebody. You're overusing your power. If you're not working that love and light, if you're not working that love and light, then you stepped over to the dark side. And when you step over to the dark side, you have to remember that you always have to give something back for them doing that wicked for you. So if you step to the dark side to do wicked to somebody, please remember that whoever you conjured up, or whoever you ask to do that wicked and evil for you, you are theirs. You are theirs. You have signed a contract with them that you are theirs. Now they're working for you, so you have to give yourself back to them. And when you start getting evil and eviler, and your life is like this, like a roller coaster, huh? like this parallel zigzags when you see everything is just upside down and mixed up for you then you'll understand your true power and how good it could be and how wicked it could be a lot of y'all don't need to be reading you don't need to be picking up any decks and reading any cards you don't need to be burning any candles like how you see me burning this yellow candle right here. A lot of y'all don't need to do it. Because when you do it, you do it for wicked and evil. And I'm going to use those two words, wicked and evil, because this is just what this is. This, this topic and situation that I'm talking about. Wicked and evil. You take your power. And you use it for wicked and evil. And you don't know who you're calling on. Or maybe you do know who you're calling on. Maybe you do know that you're calling on Satan. And Satan is doing these favors for you. You're tapping into certain type of witchcrafts and wicked. You understand? You're tapping into certain conjuring artwork. That you open up portals. Some little holes too. But most of the time, portals and gateways. When you open up these portals, you don't know what is coming in or out. You don't know that. All you know is that you opened it up so you can get something to come out of it to come and help you do your wicked and your evil. Not all the time when that thing comes out the portal, it closes. Sometimes the portal stays open. And more of what you just called on comes out. And now that's open. After a while, it empties out and it closes. And then you got all of this demonic energy floating around you, waiting for you to ask for their help. And every time they ask for their help, you owe them something again and again and again and again. Because they're doing your wicked and your evil. So you see where I'm going with this? If you're not ready to, to read cards or you feel like you might need a break, take a break. That's how real you could be to take a break. Everybody needs a break. No shame in that game. But you don't have to take a break because you're out here trying to hurt people that's not taking a break and that's tapping into their power that's tapping into their chosen destiny. They want to help people heal. They want to help people with their love life. They want to burn good candles. 
for their clients, not burning wicked on their clients. Leave space, leave room for those ones who wants to do love and light. Who wants to be a good tarot reader that anybody she gives a reading to They walk away happy. They walk away with their heart full of joy and love and light. They walk away feeling like I got the answers I needed to hear. I have the confirmation now. I have the courage now. She just encouraged me when she said those three last words. She doesn't even know how much she encouraged me. Be a good tarot reader. She's going to be tapped in to that love and light source, to that omnigalactic source and that omnigalactic mother and father source that you can't help but to walk away feeling good. Even if they told you something you didn't want to hear, you're still going to walk away and say, hey, I needed to hear that. Maybe I knew that anyway, it just was in denial, but now I hear it again. You're never going to walk away feeling wrong, all right? You're never going to walk away feeling wrong. Leave rooms for those tarot readers that operate like that I just gave an example of. Because we need more light workers, we need more shamans, we need more healers and priestesses and priests. We need more of them, corandas. We need more medicine men and women. We need more herbalists. We need, we need more poets and and teachers of health and wellness. We need more integrity, integrity, integrity. Excuse me. Get tongue twisted and moralities. We need more honesty and truthfulness. This is not a, the spiritual world is not something to play with. This is not something that's going to fly by night unless that's where your intentions is. And if your intentions is to just go through this to fly by night, make some quick money and, and move on to a new adventure, remember that there's a repercussion behind all that which you do. If it's good, all is well. If it's bad, all is going to be well too. Don't pimp the spiritual world just because you see other tarot readers out here that's really the chosen ones, not made themselves chosen because you saw them do it. Now you want to copy them. No, you're not chosen if that's how you're operating. We have to check ourselves every now and then. Every now and then, we have to check ourselves. And when it comes to the spiritual world, and when it comes to our ancestors and our spirit guides, on ourselves, herbalists and healers and light workers, you have to see that just like in the church when you was in religion, you had your bad pastors and your good pastors, all right? It's just like that in the spiritual tower world, in the conscious world. You got your good tower readers and you got your bad tower readers. You got the bad tower readers out here looking on my channel or your channel or somebody else's channel and they're mad because you got more views or you're getting more views and you're getting good comments and feedbacks and they didn't they don't appreciate you're getting good feedbacks and comments only they could get good feedbacks and comments that's not a spiritualist all right that's not a healer that's not someone that's connected to the omnigalactic source or the omnigalactic mother and father that's somebody who is far away from god because what's going on on my channel should not bother you. And what's going on in your channel should not bother me. I should be happy to click on your channel and see you got 1 million subscribers. And you should be happy to click on mine if I got 4 million subscribers. Does it matter who have more or less or equal to? Because we're not here for that. Remember, we're light workers. Remember, we're spiritualists. Remember, we're healers. We're like doctors in the spiritual world. We're energy workers. We're nutritionists. Remember, we're coming from the love and light. We're light workers. We're coming from a shaman world, steward of the earth, being responsible for all mankind, even the creepy crawling things, from the smallest sand to the, all the clusters in the galaxy. That's who we're responsible for. We're responsible for one another, not jealous and hating on one another. I just had to experience that 
at a school I was covering, at a class, I mean, that I was covering at the school. If you're a demons in that school, and if you're not a part of their demon shit, if you're not part of their circle of snakes, then they don't want you to come back. When you speak your mind and you tell them how you feel about them, they don't want you to come back. When you get them out of your face with their mischief and confusion, they don't want you to come back. And they're never man or woman enough to say it to you. They do it in a snake way. They do it in a wicked and evil way. So I'm here to tell you, I'm not new to this. I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. And I'm trying to tell you that if you're playing around in this spiritual world, it don't have to necessarily be the person that you're trying to harm will get you. It's going to come from outside of this dimension because there's many dimensions above and below. So it could come from either direction. When you're sending out evil, evil is coming back. When you're sending out good, good is coming back. And that's the matter of fact. And I'm not here to school anybody. I'm not here to pretend that I know it all because I love learning every day. That's why I'm always taking up little classes and reading on different things all the time because I'm ever learning. Keep the brain going. Keep the knowledge flowing. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm going to call a spade a spade right now. And what I'm seeing on these YouTube channels even, even before my daughter started her YouTube channel and started going into the spiritual world, reading tarot. Even before that, I would see a lot of competition in that world. And everybody has their own flow, their own talent, their own gifts, and their own skills. But what I bring to the table to make my channel shine is totally different than what you do. So that's probably why you got more subscribers than me. And we could be doing the same thing still, and you still might have more subscribers than me. I'm not sitting back watching how much your your, your um, viewership or subscribers go up. I'm sitting back watching making minds go up. Because at the end of the day, you're not paying me. YouTube will be paying me. And vice versa. But there's no need for me to hate on you. We're supposed to be encouraging each other and building each other up. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Because if you encourage me enough and I encourage you enough, that love and light right there that we're building is going to bring more people to, the, to both of our channels. Both of our channels. And not all, not all readers are the same. This is another thing you need to bullet point. Not all readers are the same. You're supposed to know this already. So if a person is getting a lot of views, on a 20-minute tarot reading that they did and loaded it up on a YouTube and they got more views than you and you did a longer one and you think yours was better because you've been in this thing for 20 years and or 30 years or 5 years or whatever years, you feel like you, you should have more. And you need to leave the tarot world alone, leave the spiritual realms alone, tell your spirit guides, I'll come back when I'm ready, tell the ancestors, I'll come back when I'm ready. Talk for the connection you have with the galactic source and say, I'll come back when I'm ready because right now I need healing. Please, I need healing. And I'm jealous of anybody prospering. Spirituality is not a competition. It's not about who can get the most viewers and subscribers or who can do the longest video or have the nice cover up. It's not about that. It's about the collective being that steward of the earth, remember? Being responsible for human for humankind, for humanity. People spend their money to you so they can get certain answers that they need in their life because evidently they don't feel comfortable maybe going to family or friends. So they see your channel on YouTube and they choose to click on you and listen to you and then book a reading with you. 
You have a service to do. You have a duty. Okay? You have a duty. You have an allegiance. An allegiance to tarot. An allegiance to spirituality. An allegiance to your spirit guides. To your ancestors. To your angels. Whatever deities that you give, that you use for your divine connection so you can give a good reading. You have an allegiance to them. And also, most of all, to yourself and to your client that you're giving a reading to. You have an allegiance to them. To make sure your, your heart is coming with pure love and light. Make sure your heart is in the right place. Before you sit down and give anybody a reading. Before you try to tap into any of their spirit guides or ancestors. You're losing respect. You're losing the reality. You're losing the true purpose of what being a tarot reader is. Hundreds of years ago, you didn't have to do a, a, a live stream that I'm doing now to remind some of y'all bad tarot readers out here that you're slipping. Because you already know once you take on this craft that you don't slip into no doing no dark, evil magic on people. You understand what I'm saying? Or being jealous on the other side because somebody's making a good YouTube channel going for themselves. You just can't sit back and be happy for them and send them love and light. Burn a candle and light of them for prosperity, love, health, wealth. You understand? You can't just go burn your little small white candle on behalf of them. Keep their blessings flowing. So now you'll get seven times seven times seven for even thinking of someone like that and sending out your love and light to them. Sharing your love and light. Now you receive more love and light. So you get brighter. You get brighter and brighter. But no, you don't want to get brighter and brighter. You want to turn off your, your light when you want. When you're ready to do your dark shit because you're jealous. You want to go and try and hurt people. But remember, like I said, those portals that you opened up, they have now closed. Well, that what you asked for can't go back. They're right here with you now. And sooner or later... They're going to turn on you because they don't have an allegiance to you. It's different. Like how you have allegiance to your spirit guides and your guardian angels and your ancestors. Well, you should anyway. Have a X amount of respect and reverence to them. They don't have that for you. They don't have respect for you. They don't have reverence to you. And they don't honor you. You called them. You opened up their portal for them to come here. The reason why they wasn't here. Why you had to go to those dark levels and open up portals when you got all your spirit gods around you, ready to do love and light with you. When you got your ancestors, your good ones now, not the bad ones, your good ancestors around you, ready to do love and light for you. When you got the divine connection from the omnigalactic source right here, ready to do love and light. Okay, ready to do it with you. Ready to send it into you. Grace you with it, wash you with it. Cleanse, purge it right there. All of that. Mm -hmm. But instead you want to open up portals and don't know what's coming out to you. Don't know. And if you do know, double shame on you for even calling out goblins and gremlins and demons and witches. All right, because at the end of the day, like I said, no matter what you do, there's a repercussion. So if you put out a bad over here, a bad over there is going to happen. Put out a good over there, a good over there is going to happen. Just know what you're doing, because a lot of you I already know you don't know. This is why I'm wasting this, not even wasting, this is never a waste, but this is why I'm spending my time. Might be a waste of time for those who don't want to hear it. So maybe that's why I started to say waste. But this is why I'm spending my time using my time. All right. Giving you my time and attention for 40 minutes and two seconds now. Because 
I know a lot of you are not ready and you just jumped into this because it looked like it, it felt good during the pan pandemic, you know, felt good during the pandemic to do what you want, do your own thing. Fix my shirt. I feel like, yeah, light on my back or something. Yeah, so um, during the pandemic, a lot of us, we, we uh, was home and probably taking classes and thinking about a new way out, a new career to take on. And you started going on YouTube and you realize, hey, I can read cards too. I always liked that. Oh, I went to a psychic before and I can do it too. And then you do it too and you do good because you're going in there with good intentions, a good heart probably at first. Some of you are bad-minded. So no, this case don't go to you. This case is for the ones that really had good intentions. But somewhere down the line, they allowed jealousy and they allowed hate to turn them back. That don't, don't worry about my channel or nobody else's channel. Worry about your channel. Keep your ancestors and your spirit guides, your guardian angels around you so they can lead you and guide you in the right ways. I'm not saying every day is going to be a loving like that because it's also love and fire. Because there's days where you have to not give the love, but you have to give the fire. And it don't matter what happens after that, what the repercussions is, that fire needed to burn. I'm not talking about that. Because I'm not perfect by a long shot. Okay, just last week, I had to burn the fire and didn't even care about the repercussions behind it because that fire needed to be burned. Nevertheless, generally speaking, you know that I'm a loving fire type of person. I'm a loving light type of person but I will come with the fire. And when I'm coming with the fire is because you're dealing with me wrongfully, not just because I'm coming with a fire just to come with a fire. No, there be a, it has to be a just cause. One of the laws of my art says, I will not be wrathful, no wrath, angry, except for a righteous cause. When you know that this is a righteous cause and I'm getting ready to, you know, pass down my fireballs on this type of situation or person, place, or thing. Yeah, you, you have to get wrathful. It just is what it is. But you don't have to be like that every day, all day, and being wicked about it. No, you have to know when to discern it. You have to know how to use it. And a lot of y'all are just walking around here, haters. Jealousy, just haters. Haters, haters, haters for no reason at all. You just hate. And most of you look like me. I'm not even just, like, I'm talking to my people now. A lot of y'all look like me. And you're so evil and hateful against your next sister. That's doing the same thing you're doing on YouTube, promoting your channel, trying to help humanity, giving your daily readings, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You hate your sister. You see another black sister on, on YouTube with her, her tarot channel going on. You taking notes. Then you go to another one, take notes off of hers, take notes off of a few other ones, go in, in, to your channel now and start saying bits and pieces of what you got from all them other ones. Are you serious? I'm seeing a lot of this happening. Y'all need to stop this. This is not the way to be. You're supposed to love your sister and brother. I look like you. My problem's supposed to be your problems. Your problem's supposed to be my problems. You're not supposed to be hating on me and trying to hurt me. Why you want to get me off of YouTube? And when I say me, I'm just speaking in general. You know what I'm saying? But why would you want to get somebody off of YouTube? Because they're doing basically the same thing you're doing, trying to make some money and help people at the same time. Everybody that has a YouTube channel is either making money from it or using it for a purpose to get the word out to the community or whatever the case is. Bring some roots and culture, some knowledge and wisdom to the station. Why? Those be the, the reasons. Some people is getting paid for it now. Some people aren't. Some people just started out and they're trying to build up their channel. So who am I to sit back and be mad at you and hating on you? All right? And they had the nerve 
to go and try and burn a candle on you to hurt you. Because you're trying to get your YouTube channel up the same way I was trying to get mine up when I started. So that means you have no confidence in yourself. You have no love for yourself. You don't believe you can do it. You don't believe you can do it. Because if you thought you could do it, you wouldn't need to be hating on nobody. No jealousy for nobody. You don't have confidence in yourself that you're worried about somebody new that has stepped into the tower world and doing very good, by the way, I must add. My daughter is doing very good, by the way. But when you have these little haters back here, you fighting over subscribers and viewership, you don't need to be a spiritualist. You need to come off, go take a break, go sit down somewhere, all right? Have a seat, take a break. Try and do a, a 21 day detox. Once a day, drink tea throughout the day. Herbal teas at that, at, at that, your favorite herbal tea, simple remedy. I you know, all right, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but that's just a simple remedy. Do some breathing exercises, listen to some meditation music right there on YouTube. They got all of these channels with healing hurts, sofigio tones and everything. Yeah, take you a nice herbal bath, nice salt bath with flowers and cinnamon and things like that. Sweeten yourself up because you're very bitter and sour. You know, you're attracting stench. You're beginning to stink. So you want to floral yourself up. You know, burn you a nice candle, a nice white candle, so to speak, for purity. Get you some frankincense and myrrh and some sage and put it on your charcoal and burn it. Or whatever pebble incense you may have. You need to do that for at least 14 days. At least. If you can't reach 21, you need to at least reach 14. When you reach 14, push yourself to do seven more. And when you do the seven more, push yourself to do seven more. And just keep doing it and doing it and doing it till you really start feeling released and restored. Where you no longer care what a subscription or viewer the next person got. Where you really don't care if there's 10 more new tarot readers on the, in the YouTube world now. You wouldn't, that wouldn't even bother you. No, at all. Not at all. Well, these are little things you need to do to, you know, sanctify yourself, purify yourself, purge yourself, you know, bring down some healing and some cleansing. Those portals that you opened up, you have to do some healing and detoxing and cleansing to remove those entities from you. They can just go down into the earth, back down into the earth and be mulched up where they belong. Transmuted and mulched up. Because you know you can you can set all the flames you want to set. There's no you when you have a, a person that's chosen to be a light worker, a healer, a shaman, a priest, a priestess, a queen mother. When you have people chosen for this craft, there's nothing you can do, sweetie. Nothing that's going to take that person off their chosen destiny. You may try to derail it and get them aggravated and annoyed with you, but their business is still going on. Their talent and their skills and their destiny is still moving. It's still there. Everything is still, you know, moving and spiraling in effect. It's still going. So, you know, when you're messing with those chosen ones, you got to really be careful because the repercussions are not beautiful. They don't look pretty. And y'all think you was big and bad when you was throwing out those, you know, wicked spells. You thought you was big, bad wolf. But when the repercussions come, you know, when the dark soul of the night come, you know, when that shadow side starts reflecting, you're not really that big, bad wolf anymore. You don't know how to handle that, you know, because that mirror reflection starts coming back at you. It's like a deer in headlights. You're not going to know. All you're going to do is go straight into a wall. You don't want to drive yourself crazy because they'll make you drive. They'll make you drive yourself crazy. 
after you have opened up the portal and closed and you got all them entities around you that's waiting to feed off of you for you to ask for their, their help so then now they can just keep feeding off of you. You know, after a while, they get annoyed too. And they'll start breaking you down. So I'm just telling you to just be careful because that slave mentality that you're operating off of, it comes from that religion that you were under before you called yourself a tarot reader or a spiritualist or a healer. It came from the religion and you brought it in. It's in your sub psyche, it's in your subconscious mind. And every now and then, when something that doesn't sit right with you because you still have this messed up DNA, all right? You, you It comes out and then you start being jealous. <laughs> Excuse me. Then you start being jealous and you start hating on people. And you start stepping to the next step doing something more evil then something more evil and more evil. And then you just don't stop. And then you'll see somebody else and you'll be doing it to them. So you're doing like five, six, seven people at one time. <clears throat> okay, sorry about that. I had a bad cough in my throat. <clears throat> Normally I have something with me here to drink, but I don't know. But anyway, yeah, you know, you're just going to make yourself sick. You're going to make yourself crazy after a while. Remember, you're opening up portals. All right, you're playing witch now. You're tapping into stuff you don't have no business tapping into. You're doing things that you're not ready for, but you think you're ready for. You understand me? So just be careful while you're out here hating and being jealous because those two things are strong. And all it does in the, in the end is tear you up. It pleats you in spirit. You walk around here like a spiritless type of person where people don't want to be around you. You start being exposed. Your own clients, your own followers start turning against you. Your own family, sometimes your mate, your husband or your wife may turn against you. So we have to be very careful about what we do and say. This jealousy and hateful thing, that you leave that for the slave master. Unless you unless you a slave master, then I can expect you to be that way. But a slave master ain't got no business reading no tarot cards anyway. So I'm just saying your energy is evil and you don't have any business reading these tarot cards. You need to put these tarot cards down because all you're doing is creating more karma, more karma, more karma for yourself that you're not going to be able to handle. Because when disaster strikes, your ass is not going to know what to do or where to go. You're not going to know what to do. And all you can do is blame yourself because you started it. You created this monster. All right? You created this. Remember that. You can't just deal with people out of your own jealousy and your own hating wrongfully now. Dealing with people wrongfully and expect to be blessed. No, you're not going to live in bliss. You ain't going to have any peace and you won't know no peace. You won't know no peace until you find peace. That's why you're all over the place with your with your magic work. Because you don't know no peace yet. If you knew peace, you would know you're wasting your money, your time, your effort, your energy. You could be putting that into a positive note. Like doing a spell for you to have more clients. And I don't mean that to be facetious, but I'm saying doing a spell to bring you more work so you can help more people. Because remember, you're this big healer, this big tarot reader, blah, blah, blah. You got all this love and light. You're a light worker. So take your talent, your gifts, and your skills and help people. All right? That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Do a ritual for yourself that you accumulate enough people that you can start helping and healing humanity. Because humanity is sick. Little do we know, humanity is very sick. We have a lot of sick brothers and sisters around here, brothers and sisters. We have a lot of sick brothers and sisters. A lot. And I'm talking to people who look like me now. <clears throat> I can speak in general and I can speak to, to mine, my own. Y'all sick in the spiritual world. All right? You get a little ego, a little big-headed, and run with it. And then you forgot when you was in your closet reading cards when you was at your best okay when you didn't have much you was at your best you forgot when you was doing it in your bedroom 
or in the back room of your house or outside in the park and outside in your backyard under the tree or, or welcoming places if you ask me. Not to make fun of it, but what my point is, a lot of y'all forget where you came from and now you're driving fancy cars, your Range Rover, your BMW, your Acura. You forgot where you came from and now you want to laugh at newcomers that's coming behind you that's been chosen to do this work and wants to do this work without hurting anybody, without trolling people's channel and being jealous because they have more subscribers and viewers than me or they're getting a lot of attention. None of that. Just sincerely here for the love of tarot, want to help the world or whoever wants my help. And you're blocking them. And I'm saying to you, shame on you. Shame on you. You're not as connected as you think you are if you even have that mindset for number one. Because if anybody comes to you with that low vibration to hate on the next reader or hate on the next anybody dealing with the spiritual world, you're supposed to check them on that and put them in their place and let them know you don't ride on that bandwagon and you're not going to put me on that bandwagon. That's how you're supposed to approach those situations. But who am I to tell you what to do, right? But you're supposed to know what to do when it comes to that. A lot of people love to throw that word when you know better, you do better out there. But the same ones that's throwing those words is not even doing better. They're the ones who's causing this mischief. They're the ones who come in with their demonic ways and their evil hearts. So just remember, when you're out here casting your spells, that what goes around comes around. And I do the old school pointing with the finger, that what goes around comes around. You will reap what you sow. Because when you do an evil over here and a wicked over there, you're going to get an evil over here and a wicked over there back. That is your tripling effect. That's your, you know, your recycling. What you put in is coming back out. You put in garbage, you're going to get garbage. Clean up your spirits, clean up your heart, clean up your mind, your body, and your soul. Do that detox I just spoke about. Simple remedy, nothing hard, not expensive to buy or anything. Most of the stuff you already got in your kitchen or in your house, if you're a spiritualist like you say you is, you should have most of those things anyway. Or, you know, one or two things you might not have, but the herbal bath, that's easy to put together. Go right in your kitchen and get some of your herbs. Your flowers, if you have any flowers outside in your yard or in your neighborhood, that's not really contaminated with, you know, the germs and stuff and chemicals that fly in the air, maybe in your backyard, your neighbor's backyard, pick the little flower buds and put them in your bath water. Listening to your smooth music, your healing hurts, or some smooth jazz. Come on, you got to know how to clean yourself and heal yourself, just like you know how to do an evil to somebody and troll their channel and be jealous of them and getting a whole bunch of other ones into your little circle of snakes to be a part of your stuff. The evil stuff that you be doing to people. You got to cut that out because you are going to get it in the long run. Not the people that you've been hurting and laying traps down for because they keep stepping over your traps. They're really not getting caught in your traps, although you're laying them. You know, it's like the saying, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You can form it, but it won't prosper. So you're forming the weapons, but they're not prospering. So don't you think you need to try a new strategy, like looking inward and cleaning up thyself? Don't you think you should think about cleaning yourself up? Because you're dirty right now. You would be what, what the streets would say, you riding dirty right now. You got to clean yourself up. If you don't clean yourself up, you're going to be forced to clean yourself up. And a lot of times that leads in death or death to close loved ones. You understand? Be careful. Be careful. Because those port that portal you open, those entities don't care about you. They're not loyal to you. They don't honor you. And they don't give reverence to you. They don't respect you. And when disaster strike for you, they're going to get slayed. So they're going to run. 
And they're going to go back down into the earth and be mulched up where they belong. Because you didn't have no business calling them up in the first place. Do your wicked and evil work because you're not ready for the spiritual world. You're not ready to read cards. Or you need to take a break. If you've been doing it too long and it's turning you into a monster, into a demon beast, you need to take a break. And start cleaning yourself. And get all of this static that's around you off of you. So thank you for your time and your attention and your patience. Um, like I said, this is Real Radio Talk with Nagis. I am also the mother, the parent of Star Seeds Tarot 444. That's her YouTube channel. And have a blessed day. Love and light. Ashe. Namaste. Hatepi.